2.8% compared to 23% in the general U.S. population. This is going back to 2011. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it as kind of, you know, at, at, the, at the bottom end of the, the economic, uh, we kind of hit the bottom of the economic situation in the country, <coughs> yet still 56% of Muslims believe that what's, what's happening in the U.S., they're, they're, they're satisfied with their lives here and, and, and what's going on as opposed to 23%. Um, of the general population. And so the survey is from, uh, it's a, a Pew Research Center study that was done in August of 2011. And some of the stats that are being compared was between what they found out in 2011 as compared to 2007. And so in 2007, only 38% of American Muslims uh, were satisfied, uh, percent satisfied with the way things are going in the United States. And so at that time, that mirrored closely to, to, to general to, to to the general public, but that has since uh, gone, g kind of gone in different directions to where 23% of the general public are satisfied. And so I don't know whether that's just that we're just, you know, a very optimistic group, or is it is it compared to where you know some of the some of the countries are origins, or is it just you know based on a, a, a faith perspective as far as where you know where things are going? But that's good. Thanks for insight. That's good. You, 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 you know. Thank you for the interview. That's yeah, right. thank you. Yeah. It's, 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 problem, it's, it's problem. like, man, yeah. that's, it's like 20 questions just now. I know, I know. <laughs> I appreciate like, it. Wow. Did you, did, you, did you carry a gun at a correctional facility? You know, I, as, as, as a side note, so I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I taught a class, I had a uh, correctional officer on, and she worked at the ladies' facility, mm -hmm. and she was like the nicest person you could you Yeah, could I mean, there's yeah. definitely a lot of nice She came people. with her uniforms and all that kind of stuff, and she brought me a photo of her with like this big shotgun. I guess, I guess she had to, you know. <laughs> Kick down the door when she, you know, would want to mess with her when 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 she uh, when she when she had to. So, all right. So we are uh, trying to uh, uh, run down uh, Dilshad, get her to uh, dial in, and uh, we're gonna take a, a couple minute break, and we will come back. We see patients with many health needs, but what they all share is a quest for health through natural and holistic way. We know that health is our natural state. Sickness is an adaptive response to an unhealthy and natural environment. At Chiropractic and Family Wellness, we seek to resolve that mismatch not only by treating the problem, but by returning the body back to a balanced and healthy environment. We provide chiropractic services, rehabilitation <coughs> services, and wellness counseling. We are located at 13461 Midlothian Turpike, Behind the big red bar. No. Excuse me. We're located at 13461 Midlothian Turnpike, Turnpike behind the big red barn. Call us at 804-594-1998 or check us out online at guidingyourfamilytowellness.com. And we have uh, the show on the line now. Oh, you do? Okay. Yes, sir, we do. All right. Hello, Bill Shot. Yeah. Hello, Salaam. How are you? Salaam, Salaam. Thank you. <coughs> Ramadan Mubarak. Hey, Ramadan Mubarak to you too. So you're here with uh, myself and uh, Siraj. Yeah, Salaam, how you doing? Salaam, Salaam, brother. How are you? <laughs> Could be better. Try not to <laughs> hack my brains out on, on uh, <laughs> you know, show here. All right, I'm gonna try to read your read your uh, bio here without uh, <coughs> uh, butchering it. Uh, okay. Dushal <clears throat> is a professional journalist who has covered Muslims in America for more than 12 years. She was the Islam editor and faiths editor for beliefnet.com. She was a U.S. correspondent for islamonline.net and was the website content editor for Islamic Relief USA, one of the largest charity organizations in the U.S. She has contributed to the Huffington Post and is now the Muslim channel editor for pathos.com and the editor-in-chief of Alt Muslim at Pathos. She blogs at pathos.com at, uh, at Muslim on Next Door. I just got tired reading that. That seems like a lot. <laughs> That's the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a it's been a busy decade. <laughs> it has it been? It has been definitely. Um, <clears throat> all right. So uh, the, the the reason I asked you to come on here is because of uh, the the work that you do for Pathios.com. Do you want to kind of uh, give us a little uh, 
understanding of kind of the general website and the purpose of it, and then we can kind of delve into the, the, the Muslim uh, channel. Absolutely. So Pathios um, is a multi-faith uh, news and religion and blogging website, <coughs> so that, which means that it has a number of different faith channels, and it covers um, religion and spirituality uh, from a horizontal and a vertical perspective, meaning we try to do a multi-faith uh, <coughs> interfaith, dialoguing between faiths kind of approach. We have evangelical Christians and progressive Christians and pagans and Jewish and Mormon and Islam and uh, Catholic and a spirituality channel and a new, and a new um, news and politics channel and launching and a couple, like um, uh, there's a movie and culture channel that just launched. So we try to do horizontal conversations that way. And then each channel editor is also <coughs> in charge of going vertical going deep and delving within their faith and building a community of writers and bloggers to debate the issues and talk about the things that are important within their faith community. So they have me on board for uh, over a year now as um, the editor of the Muslim channel at Papios. Okay. And so do, do, you, do you, is the, is the intent to um, promote the religion externally or... It, and, and or within are there? I guess I guess I'm trying to be a polite way of asking is are there debates as far as theological debates between the different channels? Well, you know, originally I think we were all a little more in a funnel where we were um, just working on debates and issues in our own faith communities. But when Pathios had its relaunch back in April, you know, we call it Pathios 3.0. Um, the purpose of our relaunch with the new site design and the way that we were implementing new tools <clears throat> and uh, the way we publish stories was so that we are sharing more across the site between faith channels because part of the larger purpose of the website is to build, <clears throat> build those conversations between the faiths and to be able to ask those questions and learn those things about each other's faith traditions and, you know, debate back and forth about what you know, what you don't know, what you find interesting, what you don't like, um, what what are the misconceptions and you know what are the truths so like i said it's a, there's it's a twofold or it's a two tier goal we want to be horizontal and we want to go vertical okay and and i know that um so it's particularly particularly for ramadan that i know that uh the focus <coughs> if i can say kind of shifts it becomes ramadan centric do you uh could you talk a little bit about that oh well, absolutely i mean i think it's pretty indicative of all the you know any muslim website whether it's just on uh, theological uh, debates or whether it's, you know, culture or everything, it's natural. All our co uh, coverage right now is geared towards Ramadan. It's really one of the key moments in the year um, to do exactly what I said, to go broad and go deep. So I've been using this opportunity to be able to spread whatever content we're producing to the other faith channels and to really try to be there to answer any questions or to... I'm hoping to bring some, you know, uh, blogging back and forth between some of the other bloggers on the other channels, uh, if we can do a little bit of dialoguing that way. And also just to, you know, go deeper within our own faith and just find how people are um, fasting and how they're uh, celebrating Ramadan and what are their goals for this month and, you know, what are we doing in our own um, communities here in the U.S.? Uh, great. So, how do you how do you handle um, from let's you know for example you know Ramadan I, I, and I'm sure you're aware that you know for example some people started yesterday some people started today. Oh and yeah. So how do you how do you it's kind of like you, you kind of have to I would imagine you have to put on some kid gloves to kind of deal with that. I mean, it, yeah, I think in certain situations you need kid gloves. In certain situations, I think some humor helps. And in certain situations, you need to just you know lay the facts out for both sides of an issue. And I, I was really interested. I think the, the moon sighting versus calculations debate is one that is pretty hot, and it happens every Ramadan, and, you know, er, not just Ramadan, but uh, when we do uh, Eid al-Adha and the Hajj season as well. But uh, I was really interested to present the, the issue to people who have no clue what goes on. You know, why, are, why is there a debate about when is it starting, and why is there always a debate about when to take off for Eid? Well, this is why. And so we published a couple of articles. Um, one was a, a piece by a blogger named uh, Irfan uh, Raidan about he was at a, the pro moon sighting camp. But he, we also made sure to link to uh, uh, an alternate viewpoint uh, that supported the scientific calculations. 
And then we put to, we uh, published a piece um, on Friday night uh, from uh, Rabia Chowdhury at Alt Muslim, uh, just just basically you know taking a humorous look about what are the differences between the two camps, and you know why is it such a big debate every year. And really, at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, we're all on Team Ramadan. So right, I, you know. I like that. I saw that. Yeah. I, actually, I actually read her article. I mean, I I, I didn't personally experience this kind of you know uh, split within a household. Between oh, I do. The moons. <laughs> oh, you do. Okay. No, no, no. I, I, my, my, mine was kind of like, you know, my parents were like, you know, this is the day we, we do it. And then, you know. Um, but unfortunately, at the, at, at the mosques, and I, and I think one thing that has gotten better is, and I don't know whether <coughs> would you, would you agree or disagree, is that, is that um, it, it's not, it, it, it's controversial in the beginning, and then, and then people are kind of left to, to approach it from whichever way they choose. And if the moonsiders want to have their own Eid, and if the you know the calculators want to have their own Eid, I think I just made up two new groups just now. Um, they're just kind of <laughs> left alone oh. to have it, and just you know, it's just you know, it's kind of like Coke versus Pepsi. They just you know. You know, it's. I think it's, uh, my husband and I were talking about it, and he was saying, "Oh, I think this issue is going to be resolved in the next decade." And I was like, "Are you kidding me? This is not going to get resolved. This is a very there's a, these are very two entrenched viewpoints about how do you determine the start of the month and um, I don't think it's going to get resolved and I was just telling him you know we were we were just talking last night well depending on when you start Ramadan that affects you know when your last 10 days are because um, no non-Muslims won't know but in the last 10 days is when we have certain holy nights <clears throat> and it's we're taught that on one of those nights that's when the, the Quran was revealed and so those are very special nights to worship. I mean, you and I know this, Hadi. But if depending on when you start Ramadan, then your nights are going to be different at the end. And we were wondering, well, who's going to be right about that? And I said, listen, the mosque decides. It's the mosque leaders. I'm just going to go with what they say, and God knows best. <laughs> right, right. And I mean, you know, and, and not to not to minimize it, but you, but you're absolutely right. And so, just if we can, um, this is a tangential note. And so, you know, Ramadan Ramadan is 30 days, and this is the month in which. The Quran was revealed. I mean, obviously right. not in one month, but you know, over the the the, the span of you know, uh, twenty three years, and it's believed that you're absolutely right. In the last ten days, particularly, in one of those nights was the was the night in which your prayers kind of um, are intensified more, and and it's mm -hmm. as though you're standing in, in prayer um, and your all night. Is Correct, and so yep. exactly right, and so. Um, it, it 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 throws that out, but but ultimately you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, people people make at every level w within all religions, people people uh, within you know, and the leadership of those decisions make decisions for the general population, and people follow those. Um, and I guess they they just put their, their you know, it's just some love blind faith that they've they yeah, reached that. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm comfortable go ahead. with it. I'm 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 comfortable with it. You know, we we talk a lot about you know when you're fasting or. Or when you uh, go for a Hajj pilgrimage or whatever thing you do, a lot of it has to do with what your intention is, your niyat, your intention. You know, it's my intention to do the best that I can. Um, I follow the guidance of the the mosque where we go. They go by moon sighting. So even though it is personally frustrating when a lot of people start on Friday and we're not fasting Friday, but it is what it is. It's all right. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we'll all be doing Eve together at the end. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's it's very it's very um, challenging to explain to your boss that you need a you need you need it two is. days off. It might be Monday, it might be Sunday. That, I don't exactly, know. <laughs> you know, there's, and there's a slight possibility, although how much remote, that it might be Tuesday. It might be Tuesday. Yeah, right. so you have to go through this lengthy explanation of you know, yeah. and you know, meanwhile on the calendar on the wall, it just says you know, it's, it says new moon. Um, right. Now I I noticed that um, <laughs> I wanted to ask you about a couple of article articles that um. Uh, had been posted, I found fascinating was the the one about the um, the Muslim rogues since nine eleven. Right. Um, so I found it interesting, and, and, and so there, there was a comment on there. Hold on, I'm getting my notes here. Um, so for those of you that don't know, you should check this out. It's 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 kind of the you know freelance terrorist, if I could if I could refer to them as that that you know that 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 happened to be that that are Muslims that carried out you know terrorist acts, and so all of the rest of us have to. Uh, uh, suffer the consequences of that or an an answer for that, however unfortunate or um, unfair that may be. And so there was a comment down there that, yeah, these guys would be considered heroes in some some Muslim countries. And so my my question is, is as as American Muslims, because in the in that in that Pew research, there's a clear 
differentiation between how American Muslims view extremism and terrorism and I would say Muslims that don't live in the United States, particularly in the Middle East. So my question is, is do you think there needs to be a clear break 